Hey guys, thank you for joining me. This is Zach with Working Joe's Roundtable.com, and we're going to be taking a look at the iConnect today. And one particular feature of the iConnect that is new, we did a video not too long ago about assessing a system when it's just started or when it's having an issue like a low charge or TXV failure and how the iConnect can sort of be fooled by that low temperature split into thinking that there is a high airflow. So the guys at iManifold watched the video, they saw what happened, and they adapted the app to sort of compensate for this issue. So what we're going to do is take a look at the app today, how it performs when you start the unit up, when you're running the unit, and we'll see what differences there are between the way the app used to run and the way it runs now. This is a 1998 Goodman heat pump. It is three tons. We're going to be shutting it off over here at the disconnect here in a second, as you can see right there, there's the disconnect. We're gonna shut it off and hook up all of our probes to it, put our indoor air probes, one in the return grill for return air temperature and humidity, and one in the closest floor grill, which is not too far from the opening of this particular uh, unit because it runs right through the wall there. And actually right in this area is a bedroom. There's a floor grill in that bedroom. So we're only gonna be running a few feet before we get to that first opening. So we're gonna set everything up. We have our two pressure ports here on the outside right there. We're gonna put our probes there, hook up for superheat and subcooling, and we'll come back to the video after we've done that. We'll take a look at how the app performs. Here's what we're working with today, the iConnect. Just think of it as a hub for all this information. It takes all the information from these probes. These are our air probes. I'm gonna go ahead and turn those on. This one will be in the return. I marked it with a black tape. And this one will be in the supply. Sending information here, which will get sent over to the tablet. If we connect to iManifold, and there we're connected now. So our temperatures will show up here in a minute. Return air, supply air. There's our return air showing up and supply air as well. So we're gonna hook up our other probes. We have head pressure, back pressure, or high and low pressure, whatever you want to call them. Hit the buttons on those. And in a moment, you'll see it appear here. You see we have our signal, the little Wi-Fi symbol there. And then we're going to attach the probes to the unit, take these and put them in the ductwork once they're all connected and sending the information over. I have my supply and return probe in place. I'm gonna get my high side probe, which is here put it in place I have a shut off on my high side probe just to make it a little bit easier high side probe is on top you can trace it back and it comes into the liquid line heading to the evaporator which is right here I got the fan on over here to scare away the mosquitoes, make life a little bit easier. Because it has just rained, and in North Carolina, just rain equals lots of mosquitoes. I open it up, bleed it out. See, we show up 115 right there. Have our low side probe. Got the hose. These hoses, the blue and red, come with the iConnect itself. Or the, uh, should I say the probes, not the iConnect, the probes. The iConnect is a separate entity. You order that and the probes come separately as well. So you order them piece by piece or you order a kit, which is sort of a pre-assembled set built for the trade.
I got that one off. Flat out. As you can see, they're both attached now. I have pipe clamps. I'm going to hook one up here to get sub cooling. This is the liquid line going to the evaporator. And hook one here, which is the suction line coming back from the evaporator for evaporator superheat. I have just a coil and a sensor I use for outdoor air to hook onto the suction probe. Let's get down there. You can see the suction probe down there. I hook it onto the second terminal. You map out what each terminal does. So I'm going to go ahead and hook that up. I let this probe dangle in front of the condenser so it gets a good sense of the air entering the condenser for outside air. Because it's judging the air going into the condenser and when you tell it what kind of system it is, it'll judge what the head pressure should be by that air temperature going in. The last probe, I'll plug into the suction probe or low side probe. Never mind the mess here, I have straightened it out. We go on to the returning from the evaporator. So we have everything set up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this door on and kind of tuck these wires behind here. And we'll start the system up and we'll take Our a look. The system has just started up. We have our two insignias here. We have temp split is stable. It's gonna become unstable here off and on before it gets uh, completely stable. Liquid line temperature is increasing, so it is not stable yet. We have our system not stable. System cannot be properly diagnosed until system is stable. So it's going to give us that warning until the system has become stable. Now we have our split, but this is gonna disappear and come back. It might be in line for a moment, then there we go it's not stable again so we had to let it run for a little bit as you see it's giving us this elevated look and here it just adjusted it down as you can see right there on the screen it's now starting to use the 400 cfm per ton and that dropped our BTUs down quite a bit because it was giving us that overestimate before but then it compensated for it and sent it back down to a 400 cfm per ton estimate which put us at 2.5 tons 30,000 BTUs which is perfect for a system that hasn't got up to speed yet and is definitely not running at its capacity. So we're gonna give it till it gets up to its capacity, making sure that our superheat comes down. If our superheat doesn't come down to the target, which is 9.9 .9, or get close to the target, it's gonna give us a warning for that as well. So let's let it run for a moment and then we will check back on it. We have our troubleshooting button pushed. System measurements indicate low evaporator load. That's exactly right. We are suction pressure is now on the high end is telling us targets there five degree superheat we're still 19 we definitely have a low load inside the temperatures are very cool but we are stable now let's check out we're still using let's see what kind of numbers we're using for airflow it can't use the numbers because it's too cold inside well what it did it actually used it switched to the auto estimation and then when the air became too cold it switched off of it yeah, system measurements indicated. That's exactly right. It's right on the money with its troubleshooting. And the, it switched exactly right. We kind of missed a switch over right there, but now it's saying we have 2.63 tons based on our 400 CFM per ton airflow, which wasn't too far off of where it was saying it was anyway. Calculated tonnage 2.98. So we're pretty close, it's using, like I said, you can see it right there, 1200 CFM per ton. So it's really nice the way it switches off of the auto estimate once it's out of parameters. You can see where it's out of parameters temperature wise, out of parameters superheat wise, out of parameters as far as system being stable. So they compensated for a lot of the factors that might lead you astray so that techs, especially ones with less experience, will be able to quickly realize that it's not quite time for the measurement. There's a measurement that's out of parameter they need to rectify before they can really assess the system. So, good job by a manifold. They reacted very quickly. Um, I released a video. I got a phone call the next day and they were already starting to work on adapting the app to fit the particular issues that I was having. So, very good job. I'm going to continue to talk about the iConnect. Very impressed with it. I don't have all the stuff for the iConnect. But the stuff I do have, the two temperature probes and the two pressure sensors, the iConnect itself, it's, it's to me, the best gauge on the market. 
I think there isn't much that can compete with it because the fact that it actually is intuitive, you don't just get numbers on a screen, it actually makes assumptions if you want it to and assists in troubleshooting. The information here, you can see some of the stuff I don't have, like the total external static, I don't have the uh, matching probes, I use my field piece for that, but they don't link up with this particular machine. You can see it gives you a whole lot of information from the sensible heat ratio, which is gonna be your sensible to latent um, cooling, bypass factor, how much air bypassing the coil, it's not being cooled. And these are oversimplifications, but just, uh, you know, you have our change in enthalpy right there from supply to return or from return to supply. And that's how we're getting our airflow measurements. But right now, like I said, it's using our 400 CFM per ton. So very impressive. Uh, closed up some of the gaps where guys might be, you know, led off the right path. And again, good job to iManifold for doing that. And we're going to continue to talk about it. It is my go-to go manifold. I have my you know digital Z-Man, or I like to call the Z-Connect, which is in my bag here, which is basically digital Robin air gauges, uh, just built in the same mode that the Z-Man was before, which is stub gauges. They were made for convenience. These are made for actual in-depth troubleshooting. It doesn't really take that long to set up. I set this up in a few minutes and was ready to go. It's a little bit easier because I have a package unit. I can actually put them, I can put them in the unit, but there's some issues with putting the probes that close to the cooling coil. So what I did is I put them in the return grill and in the first supply, they're in the crawl space, not a whole lot of heat gain there. Might be a different issue in the attic you have to compensate for, but it works very well for me. I think we're getting a lot of good information here. And I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. There's gonna be more where this came from. We're gonna to continue to talk about the iConnect. Um, we're having our tool giveaways now on Thursday on workingjoesroundtable.com. Uh, I'll put the website in the description. If you haven't joined up there and are enjoying the site, please do. And I hope that you guys will continue to watch. And if you need anything or want to see anything, just let me know. And if I can do it, I will do it. I'm reaching out to some tool manufacturers to see if we can't get a few more as far as tools on the channel, some new stuff to play with. But I don't know, it's kind of new territory for me. There's a lot of guys out there a lot better at that, but I'm working on that. So we will see, and I hope you guys tune in next time. Thank you for watching.